Hello, everybody. We are back again. Sorry for the little bit of delay in getting this next video up. Uh, just some school and everything happens, and you know how it is. So we're going to jump in and try and get through as much of this as we can, or at least for the rest of, the rest of this chapter. Okay, so we left off talking a little bit about the insulin and the glucagon. Um, rem remember that <coughs> the pancreas is where these these are going to be produced as well as stored and then released. We have insulin and glucagon. The insulin is created by the beta cells of the isolates of Langerhans and the alpha cells um, make the uh, glucagon. So when we start talking about insulin, looking at the function of insulin. Insulin's job is to counter high blood glucose. So for example, whenever we eat food, our stomach it digests, the stomach and small intestine starts to digest everything. And as it gets broken up and broken up and broken up, <clears throat> we get absorption of glucose by the small intestine into our bloodstream. And this causes an increase in blood glucose. Now blood glucose, we wanna have it around a very specific level. Um, we don't want to be up. I think the the typical glucose level is about 100. Uh, we want to be a little bit lower than that 100 level um, <clears throat> to maintain our, our homeostasis and maintain our balance. Again, if we get too low, that's also bad. We're talking about the high end. So we get up over 100 um, uh, level of 100 in glucose. The units for that, I think it was it's something like... Mi uh, milligrams per deciliter or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if we talk about that in, in the book or not, but you'll see that later on in some of your physiology courses, those precise measurements. So <clears throat> abnormally high blood glucose is the signal that causes insulin secretion. When it talks about abnormally high blood glucose, it's just as it starts to get up over towards that higher end, um, again, because we have a very specific range we want to keep it in, as soon as it passes that threshold, insulin is going to release. Insulin stimulates cellular uptake of extra blood glucose and thereby normalizes blood glucose levels. So the insulin's job is to take the glucose from the blood and put it into the cells. Okay? So glucose is taken up ma uh, majorly by muscle and adipose tissue where they are converted to glucose 6 phosphate okay so we want to remember these muscle adipose tissue and then later on we'll also talk about the liver being a place that stores uh, glucose remember adipose tissue is just is just fat tissue so <clears throat> the insulin is going to go and act on the muscle cells as well as the adipose adipose sites adipose tissues and to bring the glucose from the blood, it's going to convert it to glucose 6 phosphate. Okay? So we think glucose 6 phosphate, I think what's what has changed, we have added a, a phosphate group. And what kind of enzymes do that? So glucose to, to glucose 6 phosphate enzyme. Remember, the enzyme is a kinase, remember, or a phosphatase. So a glucose 6 phosphatase plays an important role of providing glucose. Actually, hold up. Yeah. So our glucose 6 phosphatase is going to be our enzyme that is going to be converting glucose to our glucose 6 phosphate. See glucose 6 phosphate, glucose 6 phosphatase. Very, very similar. Uh, we'll eventually get back, we'll get to those more when we talk about the uh, glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Right now, jumping back towards insulin, <clears throat> insulin secretion. Um, so we have abnormally high blood glucose levels signals the insulin to be released. Pre-pro-insulin is proteolytically cleaved to form pro-insulin. Okay, that's a really, really big word. What you need to know, these pre-proinsulin and proinsulin and then mature insulin, these are the different stages or the steps 
that insulin goes through to get, you could say, to get to its active form. This pre-proinsulin is, is kind of a storage form. The proinsulin <clears throat> then is the second step. And finally, when we get the mature insulin, that is when we act, it is actually active and actually binds to these cells and causes the reaction to take place. Okay? So there's a lot of words. So we want to know these terms. Pre-proinsulin goes to proinsulin, proinsulin goes to mature insulin. Okay? So pre-proinsulin is cleaved to form proinsulin, and then another proteolytic cleavage removes the C peptide from proinsulin and synthesizes insulin. Excuse me. <clears throat> so we have enzymes, proteolytic cleavage, so another enzyme, removes the C peptide from preinsulin. I'm gonna pop that off. Uh, and synthesizes insulin. Okay, that would probably that's probably going to be something that you want to remember that the C peptide um, gets removed. Okay. With the regulation <coughs> of blood glu of blood glucose or the regulation of insulin, insulin is regulated by blood glucose. So if we do not have high blood pressure, we should not get release of insulin. So if any time that we have low blood glucose we will not be seeing a bunch of insulin secreted. So this right here, <clears throat> we'll get into a little bit more of these kind of the glute um, transporters. These are going to be some of the inter intramembranous uh, proteins, kind of channels that are used to get glucose through the membrane because <clears throat> glucose is a really big molecule as well as then we can look at some of the um, different enzymes and stuff, and we can see glucose goes the glucose transporter through the glucose transporter GLUT2 um, into the glycolysis cycle, then later into the glycolysis process, eventually to the citric acid cycle, and then the oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, <clears throat> but we'll get all, don't worry about all of this down here right now. Just focus up to this point that the glucose coming in, and the, there's a glucose GLUT2 that helps to bring it in um, to the muscle tissue, okay? Uh, <clears throat> okay, action of insulin. So insulin activates, we get oxidation of glucose in the liver for energy, glycogen synthesis in liver to store energy, and fat synthesis in adipose tissue to store energy as well. So oxidation, the oxidation of glucose, oxidizing glucose is the process in which we turn it into glycogen, glycogen synthesis. So glycogen, remember glycogen is the storage form of glucose and primarily stored in um, the liver. Remember there's three spots we want to remember where glucose or in this case, the storage form, glycogen is stored in the muscles, the adipose tissue, and the liver. Most important thing to remember is that once it goes into the muscles, it cannot leave, okay? Once it goes into the muscles, it cannot leave. Adipose tissue, there's a little bit, because there's a couple more extra steps involved in that process, which we'll eventually get into. <clears throat> but the big one that we talk about a lot is the liver. The liver will store that glycogen. And in a case, if we go five, six, seven, eight hours of not eating, we need to regulate our blood glucose. Uh, so the, the glycogen that's going to get broken down and released back into the bloodstream during an energy shortage is going to be coming from the liver. Okay? So the effects of insulin on blood glucose. So the metabolic effect of insulin, this is just a, this is a really, really good chart to follow. If you can fo understand these charts, this is your best way of understanding <clears throat> a lot of this process, as well as in the future, 
sort of the of the physiology and the flow of everything, okay? <clears throat> Where an increase in glucose uptake by those muscle adipose tissue and liver. You have an increased glycogen synthesis in the liver and the muscle. So this is any whenever insulin is released, these go up, these go down, up, 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 okay? And then we'll see the same chart um, with the metabolic effect of glycogen. Essentially, all of these get reversed, okay? So the mechanism of action of insulin via its membrane receptors. So remember, the insulin receptor we talked about this is a tyrosine kinase. Tyrosine is one of our amino acids. So the base of the this reaction has a tyrosine. The kinase, remember, kinase is for phosphorylation, okay? So the insulin, the glucose is all in the blood, it's all around, and the extracellular area. The insulin has, is then going to come and going to bind on the receptor tyrosine kinase, which is going to cause phosphorylation on the inside part of the cell, okay? Once that is inside is phosphorylated, it's going to create a cascade that then um, signals the cell to activate the enzymes to phosphorylate this glucose and bring it into the actual cell. Glucagon, so glucagon increases blood glucose levels. Glucagon and insulin are essentially are opposites of each other, okay? So what's cool is if you can learn one side of the coin really, really well, so let's say you learn all of the function of insulin, then glucagon, you just know everything's gonna be opposite. Okay, so abnormally low levels of blood glucose causes secretion of glucagon and decreases insulin re release by stimulating glycogen breakdown in the liver, activating glycogen phosphorylase, and inactivating glycogen synthase. So glycogen phosphorylase is going to be breaking down our glycogen, and the glycogen synthase is what actually makes the glycogen. Remember, glycogen is the storage form. We're getting a lot of these glyco words. Um, make sure you write all of these out and have them straight because they're uh, it's one of the easiest, or this is one of the quickest ways that people tend to get confused when it comes to taking exams is, is all these different vocab words with all the glyco, everything. <clears throat> okay, so inhibiting glucose breakdown by glycolysis. And this is the liver, the glycolysis is the breakdown of that glycogen. Stimulating gluconeogenesis. Remember that gluconeogenesis is creation of new glucose from non-carbohydrate sorts, so stuff like fats and proteins. Increasing fatty acid oxidation in those adipocytes. So fatty acid oxidation is breaking down those fatty acids. Breaking down those fatty acids is going to actually release um, chains that can be that can, that are uh, made up of glucose as well. And then increasing ketogenesis, which we'll talk more about what ketogenesis um, is. It's kind of a a process by which if there's no more glucose available the body makes something that's similar to glucose called a ketone or a ketone body, which in a pinch can be used um, as a second option or a backup option as glucose, especially for like for the brain and for most, our most important systems. That's why when you talk about the keto diet, keto, ketogenesis, that's what they're referring to. Mechanism of action of glucagon. So it acts via its membrane-bound G-protein-coupled receptors. Remember, we talked a lot about those. You get the activation of the cyclic AMP. Remember, we talked about the, the G-protein, how it has the three different parts, the alpha, the beta, and the gamma, and how those break apart, and they go, and then they activate the... Uh, I'm spacing on the, the name. What is exactly the activate, but then that activation. <clears throat> then elite cyclase, there it is adenylate cyclase, which then activates the cyclic AMP, and then you get activation of the protein kinase, and so on and so forth to get protein phosphorylation. And this finally causes a cellular response to increase blood glucose levels back to normal. There's another nice little chart. I um, just want to touch on this real quick. Negative feedback control. What this means is that um, we have a process that we, that we go through when we're talking about hormones and how they are released and why they're released. So something is always going to feed back to stop. So like we're gonna, we have, we're eating and we get increased blood glucose. 
and then as we release insulin and do everything, <clears throat> eventually our blood glucose is going to drop, and that's going to come all the way back and stop this from continuing to happen over and over and over again. That's what negative feedback is. And that's actually the rest of that chapter. Okay. Sweet. So this is a, a nice little short video. So make sure you go back, review all of that vocab. Make sure you review the, the function and the mechanism of action of insulin and as well as glucagon. Really review this chart. This is a great chart. Lots of questions and stuff will come from here. Um, do, 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 do. Right here, the pre-proinsulin, proinsulin, and mature insulin, how that gets broken down and, and what the function, again, of the insulin is. And so on. Awesome. I will see you guys in the next video.